What's up, UTZ? What's up, YouTube? It's your boy T Sizzle back for another video. And for um, today's video, well, tonight, because the sun's going down, moon's out. For tonight's video, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to discuss serial killers, right? So, pretty much, um, uh, you know, like I'll say, like a few days, few days back, I was just on Netflix, just trying to find something to watch, and my little brother had recommended me to watch the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix special. You know, when it was popular about six, seven months ago, and I didn't watch it back then because I wasn't interested to watch it, but I just wanted to find something to watch. And when he was explaining, when he watched it, he was like, bro, like, you know, this show had me almost about to cry because it was just so sad and it was just so brutal. And he's, he's basically, he said that it kind of like fucked him up a little bit when he watched it. So I said, oh, OK, let me watch this shit. What? So I said, okay. Uh, I said, let me go watch this shit. Because uh, he told me <laughs> that, uh, you know, about how, like, brutal it was or whatever. I said, all right, let, all right, let me go watch it. So I watched it. Now, I already knew about Jeffrey Dahmer before. I believe I watched something about him when I was a kid. I either watch like a movie or some documentary or something. I even you know, but uh, I do remember watching it, and it feels good outside. It's not too hot, not too cold. Perfect weather. I love, I love weather like this because a lot of times when I record outside, it's too hot or it's too damn cold. But good weather right now. So, anyways, man. Um. So I watched it, the Jeffrey Dahmer series. It's a twelve episode Netflix exclusive. I watched it and. Yeah, that show was definitely the most disturbing TV show I ever watched. It's the most disturbing TV show I have ever watched in my whole life. I have never watched a TV show that disturbing. That's the most disturbing thing <laughs> because the scariest mo the scariest thing I ever watched was Dawn of the Dead when I was a kid. Zombies always scared me, but that show um was the most disturbing stuff I've ever watched. Jeffrey Dahmer is some motherfucker for real, dude. So, you know, um, yeah, man. So, you know, th th this is going to be a two part video. So, yeah, you know, you watch it, man. And um, so I seen the Netflix video. And then I seen like his real life interview and, you know, there's like this guy asking him questions. You know, he's like an interviewer. He said, hey, hey, man, why? He said, when did, when did these thoughts start to pop up? When did these start thoughts start to pop up? He said around the age of he said, I believe, 13 or 14 or 14, 15. That's when those serial killer thoughts started to emerge. And he said that he always fantasized about it. But. He didn't fully he didn't fully act on those thoughts until he was 18. That was when he acted on the thoughts. But before then he just thought about it. You know? And um you know, uh you know, the show just pretty much just goes through his life from childhood to teenage adulthood all the way up until his death. And the show does an excellent job. Now, the show does add some things to it. It does kind of put in its own little filler to the, to the show. But a lot of the stuff's pretty accurate. You know, he, he just... And he was homosexual. So, his first killer was a jogger. He said he always fantasized about killing some... You know, killing, killing like a hitchhiker or some shit like that. And there's a dude by the name of Stephen Hicks who said, Hey, man, you know... I'm trying to get to this concert, you know. I was wondering if you give me a ride. And Jeffrey Dahmer would be like, Yeah, man, I'll give you a ride, man. 
I'll give you a ride, you know, but hey, let's go back to let's go back to my house first. Let's go drink, drink, drink up real quick and then we'll go. He said, all right, no problem, man, for sure. So nigga, nigga went back to his crib, drunk up. They worked out and he's hey man, let's go, bro. Like, you know, we've been here for a while. Like, you know, let's go. And Jeffrey like, no, nah, man, you know, you know, stay, you know, let's stay here a little bit longer, you know. And then he gave him a kiss. And dude's like, hey, what the fuck you doing, bro? Like, I'm not gay, nigga. What the fuck wrong with you? Then, he, then he's about to walk out the door. Now is when Jeff took a barbell, whacked him upside his head, killed him. And then I believe he um he had sex with his dead corpse and he buried him in he buried him in the yard or some shit. You know, so he used to kill people. He used to lure his victims back to his house in multiple ways. Like some of his victims were gay. Some of them were straight. He didn't care if they were gay or straight. As long as he found a way to kill them and, and, and uh, 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 desecrate their corpse. That's all he really mattered. That's all that mattered. So he would, um, you know, lure them back to his crib in various methods. Like, so at, at one point he, he lived with his grandma. Then he stayed with his mom. And then he had his own apartment. And, you know, various methods, like one of his methods was he'll go to a gay bar. I think it was called Club 87 or some shit like that. Uh, the club has has not closed down and they turned it into like a new club. But back then it was called like Club 87 or something. So um, he would like go there and I don't see Jeffrey Dahmer to me wasn't really a good looking guy that had a lot of game. So he'll lure his victims back through other, you know, through other ways. I mean, I think he did fuck some people without doing this shit, but he, he didn't come off as like a charming guy to where he can pull got pull men with his looks or his charisma. I don't think he really had any sort of like charisma or charm, whereas people say Ted Bundy had charm and charisma, but I don't think Dahmer had that. So he would lure his victims in. Um, with, you know, saying, hey, man, you know, like, like he go to a gay bar. Hey, yo, you know, like, let me take some photos. Let me take some nude photos of you and I'll pay you hundred bucks if you let me do it. He said, okay, cool. And he'll lure him back to the crib, lure him back to the crib, you know, uh, say you want something to drink. He'll give him something to drink, but he'll put, he'll put sleeping pills in the drink like he'll put crush up a whole bunch of sleeping pills put them in a drink and knock some clean out thus forth after that he'll strangle them to death strangle them while they're unconscious and then that's when he will sleep with the dead body because he was into necrophilia which is pretty much sexual acts of a body sleep with the dead body and then he would dismember the body and uh sleep you know just do all, all kinds of and eat the body you know, some victims he ate. And watching his real life interview. <sighs> watching. Watching his real life interview. Jeffrey Dahmer is very interesting. You know, I'm not saying I'm a fan of him or nothing like that. But his his responses to these questions were very interesting. So the dude said, hey, man, why do you eat bodies? Why do you eat people? He said, because I like my victim to be a part of me. He's like, why do you collect? Why do you collect body parts? Why do you collect, you know, why do you collect corpses and heads and bones and all of that? He said, because I've always felt lonely and, you know, if I would kill people and just collect their body parts then they would be with me forever or some shit like that so basically saying if he because you know it, i already have a video talking about when you get into a relationship it's not going to last forever so if you get into a relationship with a motherfucker even if it's a fuck buddy loud as fuck now if you if oh man If you get into a relationship with somebody, even if it's a fuck buddy, even even if it's a fuck buddy, 
it's not going to last forever. Eventually, the person that you're in a relationship with or fucking, y'all not going y'all not going to be dating forever and y'all not going to be fucking forever. He said, so he said, okay, well, if I kill these motherfuckers, they can be with me forever. And if I eat them, their, their flesh will be with me forever. Some shit, you know, like they'll be with me forever. It was some weird shit, but it was interesting, his responses. And a lot of these serial killers, they don't come off as crazy when, when you when you get into the when you get into their interviews. When you watch people like Jeffrey Dahmer, now Charles Manson comes off a little bit off. You know, he <laughs> Charles Manson comes off a little bit off, but Jeffrey Dahmer, man, he just looks like a regular guy. You know? Not some dude who was extremely charismatic or just a little nerdy, plain Jane white boy. That's how he comes off. He doesn't come off. I've met plenty of people who kind of act like Jeffrey Dahmer in the sense of like his his persona. Not his acts, but his persona. You know? And loud as hell, man. But yeah, man. Um... Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, man. So just, you know, what he did to people, man, was just ridiculous. He even uh, killed and, and, and uh, raped even a 14-year-old, man, you know, by the name of Conrack or some shit like that. Right. And he even molested his brother a few years prior before killing him. Now, Conrack was one of it one of his one of the saddest victims to me personally because Conorak wasn't gay. Jeffrey Dahmer invited him to his apartment because he wanted wanted both both him and his brother went to went to his house in order to um have him take pictures of him so he can pay them the money cuz they were a poor family and Conorak was like, "Hey man, listen, I ain't I ain't about that funny shit, but my family needs money, so Let's take these pictures, get over with, so I can get the hell out of here. So he was just doing it just to help his family. And that's when Jeff drugged him and same shit. Did the same shit with him. That, that was one of the saddest stories right there. Because he was just a little kid, man. You know? And another sad story was a guy by the name of Tony Anthony Hughes. Um, who was a deaf guy. Uh, he was deaf. Yeah, Tony Anthony Hughes, he was a deaf guy. And uh, that was a sad story as well because, you know, um, I don't know if what the Netflix show portrayed. I don't know if that is what exactly what happened. But uh, but apparently in the show, you know, he was a deaf guy and he was trying to find a boyfriend. But people didn't really want to date him because he was deaf. Because they was like, you know, I don't want I don't want to date no deaf dude. So. He was trying to find a boyfriend and stuff, but he wasn't able to find one because people, all, once they found out he was deaf, they would curve him. It's like, nah, I don't want to talk to no deaf dude. Hell out of here. But then he meets Jeff, who, even though he knows he's deaf, he still wants to hang out with him. You know, he still wants to hang out with him and all of that. And they go through a series of hanging out and talking and all of that and Tony took a liking to Jeff and Jeff took a liking to Tony, but eventually, you know, they had sex and stuff like that. And Tony was like, Hey man, you know, um, I, I have to go to work and remind you, Tony communicates through sign language and he writes stuff down. Jeff does no sign language. So he just communicates by, by writing stuff down. He said, you know, I have to work and you know, Jeff was like, oh, can you stay longer? He's like, no, I have to work. He leaves and Jeff was going to kill him. He was going to kill him because I guess Jeff has uh, attachment issues because his mom left. His mom got and his dad divorced and his mom left the family when he was a, when he was young and he took her, his little brother with her. So I guess he has attachment issues. That's why he likes to collect people's body parts and eat them because he, he, he doesn't want to feel alone. 
he, he doesn't want to feel alone, so he does that shit. So the nigga leaves, and then he comes back. He said, hey, you know, I forgot my keys. And then he goes, gets his keys, and that's when Jeff kills him right there. And that was, that was, that was sad. I didn't like that, you know. I don't like when, you know, and on top of that, you know, um, in the show, he had left his mama's house to go move to the city to, you know, to start a new life because his dream was to be a model. And the dude in the show is actually a quite attractive guy, you know, and and the dude in the show that he looks exactly like the real life guy that Jeff killed, except the, in the show, he was kind of more buffer, whereas in real life, he was kind of more skinnier, you know, but it, it, I ain't like that shit, man. That was sad. So him and the 14 year old little boy that Jeff killed was the saddest death. And the show, all throughout the show, it just has you on edge. It just wants, it just wants the victims to just find a way to survive and get out of the situation. Like, like that's just what you're thinking the whole show. Like, oh, come on, man. Get out. Don't die, man. Come on. You got this. Come on. You, you got this, man. Come on, man. Come on. You know? And, you know? But they always die. But Jeff has, has had, a, has had, a, has had. A couple of victims escape. Like I said, that dude's brother that I told you where he molested a few years prior before killing his brother, um, that 13 year old kid, he escaped. And then there was one time where he drugged the dude, but his his grandma, because at one point he, he, he stayed with his grandma, his grandma prevented him from killing that guy. And his grandma got in the way and his grandma took him to the hospital where he got help and he was in a coma for like 10 days or some shit like that or some shit you know jeff just had a had a uh, compulsion of dismembering and eating people all kind of shit you know and um what else man um uh <clears throat> and he he didn't like to have sex the regular way he didn't like for the person to be alive and breathing and you know he even Jeff got kicked out of out of a bathhouse which a bathhouse back then was pretty much like a like a sex hotel like it was like a sex hotel back in them days and he he would take guys there drug them and then fuck them you know he didn't like to have sex the regular way where the motherfucker's actually alive or, and breathing sometimes. Now, there are some people he killed and some people he didn't kill them, but he drugged them and he fucked them when they were knocked out. But yeah, so he he didn't like sex the regular way. He, he liked to have sex the, the fucked up way. But I don't want to get into every little detail of the show. All I'm saying is that show was a great show, 10 out of 10. And watching that, I started to understand the psyches of serial killers and stuff like that. Even Ted Bundy himself, he, he would also eat some of his victims and he would collect body parts as well. And he said the same shit Jeff said. Uh, he said when he said he ate, he said, uh, when I eat my victims, I want them to be a part of me. The same shit, you know. And it's crazy, man. Um... It's just, that show's crazy. That, that show is the most disturbing show on TV that I've ever watched. It's the most disturbing show. Just going through Jeff's life and all of that. And I, I feel bad for Jeff because these thoughts that he had, he just randomly got that shit when he was 14. Before that, he ain't think like that. He just randomly got the shit. And you know... Um, they say that when a person is potentially becoming a serial killer, one of the things that they'll do is they'll hurt animals. And he loved to dissect animals and shit, dissect roadkill and dissect them and all of that. And some of his jobs, he even worked as a butcher where he would like, you know, be a butcher and shit. So he, so he, 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 he knew, yeah, he worked to be a butcher in school he loved he he loved science class because he he got the dissect shit. That's why he was very proficient at cutting shit open because he already had the skills to do it. You know, he was just a weirdo, man. 
but he, he but a lot of these serial killers they don't come off like weirdos like when you, when you t watch a lot of these serial killers interviews like him ted bundy robert little which is a black that's another thing there's black serial killers it's not only white you think there's only white people because that's all that's the ones that got popular there's black serial killers robert little he killed 93 women and he's black you saw his interview he doesn't look like he's just a regular black dude and when he was younger he was handsome too so yeah man that jeffrey Dahmer shit man that that show very traumatic man you know but i feel bad for him because um see in this world you can't control certain shit um, I wish that I wasn't born with a sex drive, but that's just what I have. I can't control that. I was born with that. So picture you, you can't control your sex drive. Picture that same shit in the sense of like, yo, I can't control the fact that I have these urges to kill people. And he said that he just couldn't control that urge. It was just there since he was a kid and he couldn't control it. So it's not his fault. That he had those urges and those feelings. It's not, it wasn't his fault. You know? He didn't ask to be born with psychopath tendencies. He didn't ask to be... Same goes for Ted Bundy and all those other ones. You know? They didn't ask to be born with that. They were just born with it. <laughs> you know? They didn't ask to be born with those psychopathic characteristics. You have some pe people who were born like that and some people through certain life events certain tra tra traumatic experiences turn him into it he was a person who was pretty much born like that and those you know he wasn't born with that from birth necessarily but when you grew up he just ran like like imagine being normal and then the next day you just have this a compulsion to do that shit to people he, it just happened you know that's why you shouldn't have kids in this world because you don't know what type of things they're gonna like and what type, what type of compulsions they're going to be into. That's why you shouldn't give birth to kids in this world. Because they can become the next Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy. You know? It's crazy. <laughs> you know? And after watching this show, I've took a fascination with, un with understanding serial killers. And just understanding why they do what they do. And just being just curious into them. You know? There's a thing called morbid curiosity where you're interested in all sorts of morbid shit that's what i'm going through right now currently and also what jeff would do was after you killed someone he would take the photos of the bodies and shit and some of the photos on the internet which i've seen some of them now due to the fact that i've seen a lot of gore and blood it didn't really um it didn't really disturb me that much because i've already seen a lot of that shit already but still the nigga took pictures of victims with their heads heads cut off, their guts exposed, you know, their feet, you know, their hands cut off, all kind of shit. But he finally got caught when when he tried to kill someone and the person escaped, told the police, and then the police searched his apartment and that's when they found all that shit. And on top of that, when Jeff was staying in, in his apartment, you know... <laughs> Um, the neighbor be like, yo, Jeff, why does your fucking house stink, man? Like, yo, like, stinks in this mud. Like, it stinks, man. Jeff be like, oh, you know, I just left, you know, it's just some, you know, uh, just some meat that I got that expired and it went bad. <laughs> yeah, human meat. The motherfucker probably thought it was like chicken or pork chops, but it isn't human flesh. Which, if you think about it, us humans... We're no different from Jeffrey Dahmer in the sense that we have flesh... In our fridges and freezers, it's just it's not human flesh, it's of another species. But we're the same motherfuckers if you think about it. But still, man, if Dahmer's one sick motherfucker, man, and Jeffrey Dahmer, he even said he's like, bro, I'm not crazy, you know, I'm not insane, I'm not. Which Jeffrey Dahmer does not come off as crazy. You got some people who are psychopaths, which he is a psycho, but he's not like crazy. He's he's mentally sane. It's just that's what he does. Like he just does that shit. You know, it's weird. Like you have people like 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 Richard Ramirez who was crazy. 
But then you have people like Jeffrey Dahmer, who's not crazy. It's just they just do that shit. Not everybody that does some bad shit is crazy. You know? When we dropped the bomb on Pearl Harbor in Japan, was that person crazy when he did that? No. He just did it because that's what he wanted to do. He wasn't crazy. You know? We may call them crazy, but in all actuality, they're not crazy. They have all their shit together up here. It's just they just wanted to do it just for the sake of doing it. I don't know. I don't know. Because in his interviews, he comes out like a regular guy. But yeah, man, that show was crazy, man. Fuck was that? You know, definitely after watching it, after watching that show, what I learned is if you go to a stranger's house and they offer you something to drink, don't fucking drink that shit. Don't drink it because you don't know what's in it. So that's what that show taught me, man. When you go to a stranger's house, you don't know this person. They say, hey, you thirsty? Don't don't drink nothing. Don't eat or drink anything. Don't eat or drink anything that they give. I'm definitely going to. That's a life lesson I took from that show. <laughs> don't fucking eat shit from strangers and drink shit from strangers. I ain't doing none of that shit no more. Thank God the people that I was dealing with wasn't Jeffrey Dahmer. Or people like Jeffrey Dahmer. You know? He's not the only one out there that's like that. There's other, there's other, people, there's other people out there like that too. You never know any of these people, that's are, these apartments that's around me, if there's any Jeffrey Dahmers in this motherfucker. You never know. You never know the people that you come across on a daily basis. The person that you talk to or that you see here and there could be a monster and you'll never know. You know? All these apartments, you don't know who you don't know who lives in these motherfuckers. You feel me? I doubt there's a motherfucker killing people in these apartments, but you never know. You know? So yeah, man, interesting show, great show, ten out of ten. You know, loved everything about the show. Very disturbing. You know, I feel bad for Dahmer because he didn't ask to be born. He didn't ask to be born with those thoughts. People say he was racist. I don't think he was racist. He just killed. He just killed a lot of black people towards the end of his murdering career. That was after he moved to a black neighborhood, and all that was accessible around him was black. Because his first few murders were white people, and he killed people of all race. He killed two. He killed a dude who was Indian. He killed some Asian motherfucker. He killed some white people, but he killed like seven black people because he moved to a black area. That was those was all the people he had available to him at the time. He wasn't racist, in my opinion. Yeah, sick motherfucker, man. Very fascinating for sure. I'm not gonna say I'm a fan of him, but he's very interesting, very fascinating. Very fascinating to go through that. And in jail, he got killed because some motherfucker bashed him with a fucking barbell. You know? Because when he was in. Damn, man. Yeah. All right, man. Go, 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 go. So, get a fucking copyright. You know, he got caught. Yeah. But, like I said, I don't want to explain his whole fucking life story. Because that will be a long fucking video. I don't want to go through every little detail of his life. Because I'll be talking for a long time. But, the video's already 30 minutes already. But, um, yeah, in jail, he got killed because... You know, when he was at the in the cafeteria, he, he'll he'll be making sick jokes like he'll be making like sick jokes about his about his cannibalism and all of that shit. Like you know, he'll he'll make sick jokes and shit. Then um, yeah, like he'll do that, and uh, like sick jokes, and there's a dude there. I forgot his name, who didn't like his jokes about stuff like that. And the dude said that he was doing the Lord's work. And he said the Lord told him that he had to kill Jeff. <laughs> and he killed him by bashing his head with a barbell. Because they were scheduled to clean some shit up. And the police left him unatt unattended in the workout room. And he picked up a barbell, uh, a bar, a bar, like a, you know, like the bench press thing. He had picked up one of them stings and bashed his head with it. And that's that was the end of Jeff, man. But uh it's I just find it ironic that 
every single person who goes to prison for various reasons, serial killer, killer, etc. They always come to Jesus. They always come to the Lord because they want some sense of salvation. They want some sense of like, you know, hopefully the Lord will get me out of this prison or when I die, I, I don't go to hell for my crimes or whatever. All of them come to the Lord. Because Jeff was an atheist, then he became a Christian. Every serial, every bad person, when they get in prison, they always convert to Islam or Christianity for some reason because they feel like they're God. Because they want that hope that God is going to break them out of prison and break them out of jail or, or, or save them or forgive them for their crimes because they think when they die, they might go to hell or some shit like that, you know? But they don't realize that <laughs> no guy's going to break you out of prison and nigga, there's no such thing as hell. So you just want to just die in jail, which that's what happened to his ass. <laughs> and, and it's funny how everybody always says, I'm doing the Lord's work. But you got two people who say that, but both of their ideologies contradict the other person's ideology. I'm doing the Lord's work. The Lord tells me I have to kill that person. And the other dude says... Well, I'm doing the Lord's work and the Lord's work tells me to save that person. So who's doing the Lord's work here? Who, who's doing the Lord's work? <laughs> None of y'all ain't doing the Lord's work. It, that's just your own brain. You're doing the work of your damn self. Ain't, you ain't doing the Lord's work, motherfucker. <laughs> so fuck that. I'm doing the Lord's work. You ain't doing shit. Shut up. Ain't doing no Lord's work, motherfucker. But interesting show, man. 10 out of 10, man. You know. Sick as sick as fuck, man. You know, feel sad for the victims and their families, but all in all, one of who's one of who's to blame? The parents. You keep having kids in this fucked up world. That's what happens to them. So, so fuck the parents of Jeffrey Dahmer and the victims. Fuck them. I don't give a fuck. They're crying. They're in the shit crying. Oh my 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 baby. Well, motherfucker, you're the reason why your baby got butchered, motherfucker. Because your ass had the motherfucker. So fuck you. Fuck Jeffrey Dahmer's mom and his dad for making them. I feel bad for Dahmer. Because he didn't ask to be born this shit and asked to be born with those sick thoughts. You know? I'm not defending Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, I kind of am. But I I'm glad he's dead. People like that deserve to die. Because Jeffrey Dahmer, even in the interview, the dude was like, hey, man, have you... He said... Do you think, he said, um, have the thoughts gone away? Have the thoughts of doing this, ha ha have they went away? He says, man, I don't, th I, don't think I don't think they'll ever go away. I don't think these thoughts will ever go away, man. He said, I'm going to have it for the rest of my life. They're never going away. And he, <laughs> I respect Jeffrey Dahmer, bro. I do because he didn't ask for that shit. He didn't ask for those sick thoughts. This, uh, our human brain can, can just be fucked up, man. He didn't ask to think like that. He was just born with those thoughts, bro. He didn't ask to have those thoughts. You know? And, and he said that he, that he always felt bad for doing the killing, but he just couldn't help himself. You know? I, I feel, and, and I respect his honesty during the interview. Because he said, you know, I'm already caught. There's no point of me, you know, lying or holding shit back. I'm already caught. I might as well just let the, all the shit out. You know, and he and people, you know, and he, and he let it all out, man. You know, and yeah, he gave his reasons why he did what he did, man. You know, so yeah, he didn't like being, he didn't like being lonely, and the thoughts just popped up randomly. He had no control over that. He said, you know, and do said, hey man, why did those thoughts pop up? He said, man, I don't know. It just happened. This just, just happened randomly, man. I don't know. It's fucked up, man. That's why you shouldn't have kids in this world. I feel bad for Jeff, man. Good thing he's dead, though, because people like that don't need to be alive. But still, it's still fucked up, man. Because he didn't ask to be born with those thoughts, man. So, I don't know. Um, R.I.P. to Jeffrey Dahmer, man. I'm not a fan or nothing. I'm not saying that I condone his actions. I'm not saying that. I'm not a supporter of his. Which is surprising, because he had fans when he when he was in jail i'm not a fan but i understand where he's coming from even though i disagree with, with all the shit he said i don't condone those actions by yeah by any means at all 
But I understand what he was saying. So I want to say I'm out.